So, so far in our series of IoT videos, we've taken a look at digital outputs and digital inputs, which both communicated with our app. And now in this video, we're going to take a look at analog signals and what we can do with them. So for one, it's worth noting that the Node MCU and actually most other IoT boards only have one analog pin. It's named A0. This is because unlike other microcontrollers, it's more focused on the digital pins rather than analog. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what analog actually is and why it's so different to digital. Now, you'll see on this Arduino Uno that it has six analog pins. These are normally used to read data from sensors because analog values can be anything from 0 to 1024, compared to digital that can only be 0 or 1, on or off. So for example, buttons are great on digital pins because they're either closed or open, 0 or 1. However, if you plug a sensor into a digital pin and start sending back data, all you would see is the pin stay at 0 or 1. Whereas if you plugged a sensor into an analog pin, you'd see each value plotted from 0 to 1024. So let's take a look at this in action. I have these two different resistors which have two different resistances. If I connect one from 5 volt out to pin A0 and read the data, I get this value back. But if I plug in a different resistor, the value changes. Okay, so let's take a look at how to get this data to our phone from our IoT device. We start by uploading the AppShed master sketch to our IoT board. If you're unsure of how to do this, there's a very detailed written instruction in the video description, or check out the IoT Blink video for a detailed guide. Once the sketch has been uploaded, we need to start making our app. We do this by heading over to appshed.com and logging in. From here, you should see IoT Builder. We need to click on this and click Start a new board. We're going to name the board IoT Input. Now we click Potentiometer under Analog Inputs and attach it to pin 40. We do this because pin 40 represents analog pin A0. Now we need to give it the variable name pot and make the range 0 to 100, followed by save. Now we can head over to the app building side of things. We need to make a new app by clicking the little plus icon at the bottom of the page, then we're presented with a blank app. The first thing we're going to do is link the board we just made to our app. This is done by clicking on board and then clicking on the one we just made. Now that it's linked, we can add this input box, which can be found under Forms. Now this part is really important. We're going to give it the title IoT Input, but we need to give it the name Pot. This way it knows to read variables from pin A0. Now we can click Save, followed by Publish, and once that's all loaded up, the app is live. To get it onto our phone, we just click Share and scan the QR code. And just like that, the app is on our phone. Now the final thing we need to do is plug our potentiometer into our IoT board. We do this by connecting the middle leg to A0, the left leg to 3.3 volts, and the right leg to ground. With that done, we can connect our phone to our IoT device's Wi-Fi AP, and we should see the values come into our app. As the potentiometer is turned, the resistance changes, which we see by the changing of the analog values on our phone. Now, this is a very simple example. However, imagine doing this with sensors and being able to see live results from your sensors on your phone. Now, full written instructions can be found below with all links needed. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you in the next tutorial.